Let me show you a way to interact with MCP servers in a way that you might have not ever seen before. So here we have the Claude desktop UI. It has an MCP server attached to it, in this case, fetch. You can see that right down here. So let's go over to our configuration and see where that's set up. So go over here to developer. Okay, fetch is cool, it's running, that's great. We'll edit the config. Now you can take this config file and drop it into our cursor. You can actually see what it looks like. So this is the configuration for Claude. It would list all of the different MCP servers. In this case, there's just one, fetch, and it is a standard IO server. We know that because there's no URL here. It tells Claude that this is the process that you're gonna fork. So in this case, the command is UVX and the arguments are MCP server fetch. So let's try it out. I go here, I grab UVX, I go to my terminal, I type in UVX and then I give it that argument. Then I go back here, grab the argument, MCP server fetch. Then I hit return and I get nothing. So what's actually happening here? Well, this MCP server that we just launched is waiting for us to initialize it. Well, how do I know that? Let's go take a look at the MCP documentation. So over here in the MCP documentation, you got the core architecture page. There's two different layers to the MCP protocol. The first one is the protocol layer up at the top end. Those are the different messages that are sent between the client and the server. And then there's a transport layer. How do you transport those messages from the client to the server and vice versa? And there's two different ways to do that. There's a standard IO transport, which is what we're looking at it now. And there's HTTP transport, so that would be over the web. Both of those use JSON RPC 2.0 messages. Now, if you scroll down a little bit further, you can start to see the life cycle of the connection. So first thing we need to do is send an initialization message. So thankfully, in a gist that is attached to this video in the description right down below, you get a lot of commands. Step one, we just start up this UVX MCP server fetch, and now we're gonna send it the initialization command. So I'm actually gonna copy and paste this whole thing into my cursor so that we can kind of step by step by step it there. So here's an example initialization message. Now I grabbed this one from the MCP inspector, as you can see over in the client info name. So it says the name of the client. In this case, that's the MCP inspector. You want to change that when we go and make our own. So a JSON RPC message has four primary elements. It's got the standard itself. So JSON RPC 2.0 ID, that would be the tracking ID from the request, in this case, zero, the response. So that's going to be zero coming back from the server. It has the method. What method do you want to call? In this case, initialize. And then it's got parameters. So in this case, we're saying, here's our protocol version. Here are the capabilities of the client. And then some information about the client. So in this case, I grabbed this from the MCP inspectors. So the client info name is the MCP inspector. And that was the version when I got it. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go over to my console. And I'm literally just going to paste this in. So when it comes to response, you get the same thing, JSON RPC 2.0. You get the ID that matches the ID of the request, and then you get the result. So in this case, the result says, cool, I am a server. This is my protocol version. Here are my capabilities, and here's my info. So in this case, I am the MCP fetch server, and here's my version. Pretty amazing that we can actually talk to the MCP server in the console, but listen, let's keep on going with it. So if we go back to the docs, the next thing we need to do as the client is send a message from the client to the server saying that we are initialized. So we need to notify the server that it's now initialized. We'll copy and paste that in. All right, now we don't get any response from that. That's fine, this is just a notification. So what do we wanna do with this thing? Well, let's find out what tools it supports. We know that it supports tools because under capabilities, it has a tools key. So let's go and ask it which tools it actually supports. To do that, we'll go over to step four here. We'll send another JSON RPC message. In this case, the method is tools list, and then we give it an optional progress token. Some things take a while, so there actually is a progress mechanic in this, but we're not gonna use it. So let's try this out. So I go back over here, paste in again, and now we get this big response, and this big response is telling us that it does have a tool. That tool name is fetch. It gives us a huge description of it, as well as the input schema. So importantly, it takes a URL. Now that we know that it has a fetch tool, let's invoke that fetch tool. So I go back to my documentation, we can see that we have an example tool call request. So the method is tools call. You give it the name of the tool that you want to run. So in this case, fetch, and then any arguments that you want to send along with it. So what's the URL here? So this URL is just a sample JSON placeholder. It's got some JSON in there. So we should expect to see delectus aut autumn. Okay, cool. We'll grab that. I'll clear the console. And there we go. So I made that tool call to fetch and we actually get back the response. So we can actually see that embedded in here. 
All right, I'm going to finish the session by hitting Control D. Now, it's really cool, right, that we can interact with the most popular type of MCP server, an MCP standard I.O. server, using just the terminal. So let's talk about why that works as we construct our own DIY MCP server from scratch using no MCP libraries. And then in the next video, we'll do the same thing with building an MCP client from scratch. Again, no external MCP libraries. And in the third video, we'll integrate AI into our client, again, without any libraries, so you'll understand these concepts at the core level starting from the ground up. Let's get right into it. Okay, let's bring up Cursor. So I do have the basics of a TypeScript project going on here, but there's nothing in that index file. So the first thing we want to do is get standard I.O. working. So what is standard I.O.? Let's talk about that for a second. So here's the Wikipedia page for standard streams. Now there are three standard streams that come in and out of a process. This graphic is simple, but it's actually pretty good. So with a terminal, like what we just did, our keyboard was routed to the standard in of the process. So there's three streams here. There's standard input or STD in, there's standard output or standard out, which in this case is mapped to the display when you're using a terminal, and there's standard error where any error messages go. This is the same whether you're on Windows or Linux or OS X. Every one of these operating systems supports these three primary streams, standard in, standard out, and standard error. And together, they're known as standard I.O. In addition, every modern language you can think of supports the standard I.O. set of streams. And because really all you need is standard I.O. and JSON support, and most languages have JSON support now, that means that you can build one of these MCP servers and an MCP client in literally any language you want. We're gonna build ours in TypeScript. Let's start up by actually connecting to standard IO. So I'm gonna bring in read line from node read line. That's gonna allow us to read lines from standard IO. Then I'm gonna bring in standard in and standard out from our process. Those are objects that represent the input and output streams. Next up, we're gonna connect that to read line. So we're gonna call create an interface to give us back a read line interface. And we're gonna give it input as standard in, output as standard output. Next up, we need a place where we can actually use things like await. So we'll create a async function called main and then invoke it. And then inside there, let's just go and read lines and then console log them back out to see what the flow looks like. So now we're going to read a line from standard input, and then we're just going to console log that out to standard output. So let's give it a go. So first we'll build it, and then we'll run it. Okay, we're built and run. I can say hello, and I get back hello. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, cool. So now we know that requests coming in from the client are going to come in using this read line, and then we're going to respond using just console log. Now those incoming lines are going to be JSON, so let's go parse that. So we'll put a little try catch around our JSON parse just to be safe. And now I've got our JSON back, so now let's go and look for that JSON RPC 2.0 signature. All right, now we look for JSON RPC. Now let's go see if we have an initialize method, because that's the first thing it's going to send us, right, is initialize. Now that we have initialize, we need a way to send something back. So let's make a new function called send response, and it's going to take as a required first value the ID of the incoming request, is because the response needs to have that same ID, and then the result object, and the result object could be anything. Then we format our response, which is going to have our result, our JSON RPC version number, and then our ID in it. And then we output that on a single line, using JSON and stringify response in the console log. If it did something like this, null two, that would pretty print it and put it out on multiple lines. We don't want that. We want everything to be on a single line of JSON. So we just want stringify response just like that. All right, now let's go down here and actually send back our response. So we use that send response to send back a response to that request. We'll give it that ID. The response ID has to match that request ID. We'll give the protocol version. We'll say that we're gonna support some tools and we're going to give it some server info. So let's go make some server info just to say who we are. We'll call ourselves the coffee shop server. So we're going to have information on coffees. So you know what? Let's go and bring those in as well. So here's the data that we're going to have access to. It's just going to be a list of drinks, their prices, and some descriptions. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So now we've got our server info in there. That's great. And you know what? This should actually be enough to test. So let's do PMPM PM build. Now we're going to run the MCP inspector. That's the easiest way to actually check to see, is this an actual MCP server and is it talking correctly? So bring that up. All right, here's our MCP server. We want to make sure that standard IO is selected. Then the command is node. 
And then the argument would be the location of the script that we just created, so dist index. Now let's connect. Holy moly, that worked. Awesome. So we sent the initialize method, and we got back the coffee shop server. That's really cool. All right, now let's list tools, and it does nothing because we're not actually listening for the list tools request. So let's go and add on to our code to handle getting back list tools. So we're going to look for the tools list method, and then we're going to send back a response. That response is supposed to have a list of all the tools. Of course, we don't know yet what our tools are. So let's go and create some tools. So let's define two tools, one called get drink names. It's going to give us back the list of the names of the drinks and then get drink info, which given the name of a drink is going to give us back all the information about the drinks, the price and the description. Now, of course, with each one of these tools, you want to give it a handy description. So the AI understands how to actually use that tool. And then for parameters, you want to give it a input schema. And that input schema is going to be of a type of a JSON schema. So for get drink names, it doesn't take any parameters at all. So that's easy. You give it a type of object with no properties. And then for get drink info, we take one property that's name, it's required, and it's of a type of string. All right, now let's go to back down to our tools list and see what we're doing. Well, all we're doing here is we're just taking tools and then we're giving it that name, description, and input schema. That looks good. Let's give it a go. Again, we'll build, run our inspector again. We use the same connection. Let's list our tools and whoa, cool. Now we have our tools. So we got get drink info. It actually takes a parameter, get drink names. It doesn't take any parameters at all. You can see down here in our history, we actually called that tools list. We got back that right response. This is going great. Okay, cool. So let's go over here to get drink. What happens when we hit run tool? Well, we hit run tool and it does, and we get back a timeout because we tried to call that tool. You can see tools call, parameters, get drink names. Everything looks good, but we don't actually respond to tools call. So let's add that. All right, so let's add method tool call, and then we'll get back the tool. So we'll find that in our list of tools. All right, so now we need to execute it. Well, we could actually just add more conditionals here to just say, well, with this name, then run this and whatever. I'm just going to go and add execute functions to each one of these tools. Makes it a bit cleaner. So in the case of our get drink names, we're going to have an execute function that returns content of type text, where we have a text string that is the stringified array where we just take off the names. So we're just going to return the names. Now this format here with the object, with the content, that's part of that MCP standard. That is the response format from a tool. All right, let's do the same thing for get drink info. So in this case, we're just going to find whatever drink, and then we're going to turn either the drink info or drink not found. All right, now we've got our execute. Let's go and actually use those. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is check to see, do we have a tool? And if we don't, then we're going to send back an error message saying that we don't have that tool. Otherwise, we're going to go and execute that tool and then send back whatever the response was. Let's hit save, build it again, bring up the inspector again, connect, list tools. Now let's get our drink names. And there you go. We can run tools. Let's try it out with get drink info. We'll ask for what a mocha is about. There you go. <laughs> pretty amazing stuff. So that's pretty cool, right? We got our MCP server running. It's handling tool calls. There's one more thing I do want to cover, though, and that's resources, because I think they're very important as well. And currently, we're saying that we don't actually support resources. So let's go back over here and see how we can support resources. So first thing we want to do is say that our capabilities include resources. Now, that list change true is telling the MCP client that if the list of resources ever changes or the list of tools ever changes at runtime, then we'll send back a notification to the MCP client saying that the tools or resources have changed. We're not actually going to do that here, but I imagine that if you have resources that are transient, maybe like files or database records or something like that, then yeah, you'll want to go and ha understand how this list change works and the notifications you want to send back. But we're going to make it pretty easy on ourselves. So let's go up here to the top and then we'll create some new resources. We'll give ourselves one resource. It's the menu of all our drinks. The name is menu, and then we'll give ourselves a getter function, which will return again that contents. In this case, we'll say that it's a text string and give it the URI of menu app. So that URI has to match between the resource and then what gets returned from the get function. Now, in order to support resources, you have to support two different JSON RPC methods. 
The first is resources list that returns an object that has a resources key that has an array of all of the names and URIs of the different resources. And just like we had tools call, we have resources read. And then as a parameter, you get the URI. What resource do you want? We go and find that. And then if we found it, we use that dot get function to get our response back. Otherwise, we return resource not found. Let's give it a go. Reconnect. And now we can see that we have resources as well as tools. It goes off and reads it. And there we go. We have our resource. All right. Now, as I mentioned, MCP is a standard, right? And so standards have lots of different things you're going to need to support. I'm going to add one last one here to make sure that we're fully in compliance. And that is a response to the ping method. The ping method is just a way for the client to ask whether the server is still alive. And all you need to do is just send back a response that is an empty object. Now, as I mentioned, there is a way to do progress indication for long running processes. If that describes something that you are going to need, then make sure to go and check into the progress section of the spec. But for the rest of us, I think this is a great starting point. So the next thing we're going to do is build an MCP client that uses this MCP server. And we'll do that in the next video. Of course, there's a link to that in the description right down below. In the meantime, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.